hey guys what's going on in today's video i'm going to show you guys how to do twixer just like this so yeah let's get right into it all right guys so i'm just going to go right into it now i did uh cut and put these clips so that for each frame there's a movement but i'm going to show you guys i guess from like the bare minimum of what you have to do the bare bones so you just come through here and you cut it each time it moves so this one's just going to be two because i've already done this scene a lot so i know it's two and then all you're going to do after you cut them all out of movement uh go to the bottom click the bottom clip hold shift click the top clip pull to the left and then you're going to come in here right click go to keyframe assistant and then sequence layers now i have mine bound to c i put that as a bind for myself but you guys will have to do it that way unless you make your own bind for it and then after you do that you're going to highlight the bottom one and then highlight the top one and then pre-compose now when you're doing the sequence layers it's very important that you highlight it from the bottom to the top to sequence it because it will do it the right way in order but if you oops if you were to highlight it from the top down it's going to sequence them backwards now sometimes you're going to want it to be backwards which i'm going to show you in a second but for this clip i want it to be straight <clears throat> so pre-comp it and then i always name them in order that they go on the composition in some cases you might want the clip to go backwards so for this clip I know that um, I'm going to do a po position slide here to the other side of his face, but you see how they have like the same movement. He's opening his eye and then he's opening his eye again and it kind of won't make sense for that to happen. So what you can do is do the same thing, but instead of sequence it from the bottom up to keep it in order, you can reverse speed it by doing it like this and then pre-comping it, naming it clip four. And now... It'll, his eye will open and then his eye will close and it makes more sense just that way then you know of course having it open again when you already see that his eye opened all right guys so now i'm going to show you basically how to do the twixter method so for me i have a fx console right here and i have presets for my twixter and my rsmb uh here are my rsmb settings right here just 0.4 and 50 that's what i use and then, you know, the basic fixture settings, everybody uses the same one. Except for me, I use Mission Weighted Blend and Inverse with Smart Blend. Uh, some people use Forward. For me, I just think Inverse looks cleaner than Forward, but it doesn't really matter. Everybody kind of does whatever they feel like. Uh, make sure that this is checked or on your composition frame rate. And then what you're going to do is change speed, the frame number. And you're gonna click the stopwatch and then you can just go however many frames forward or one frame forward and you're gonna hold control on your keyboard and scroll to the right until there's a black screen and then you want to go one frame before the black screen so that you see the screen so for me it was 11 it's gonna be different depending on how many frames you actually have because it's gonna match up with the exact um, frame rate of how long your clip is how many frames but minus one because of course you know the last one will be black so black screen and then um if your clip isn't long enough for how long you need it to be you can just click uh time remap and it will make it super long and then you can just do it that way so for me i'm gonna make each one of my clips uh i guess two or 20 frames long so i do it like this and then easy ease them and then for me i just use either this graph you can play around with it it really depends on like what you're going for and also depends on how long the clip is because the longer the clip is that you have, the tighter you can make this towards like the, this wall. And if it's not as long, you might want to have it more like this. And then if you want it to last longer, like the clip to have more uh, movement throughout the whole thing, you pull this down. And if you want it to be tighter movement and super slow towards the end, you pull this up. So that's basically kind of how it works. I usually go somewhere around here, but it always differs on depending on what clip it is and then you're just going to do that to the graph and i'm going to cut it just so i know where the end is and then it will look something like this just like that for this one i could probably have it come in a little bit i think that would look better in this case so yeah i think that looks better that's basically how you do it. It just basically goes super fast and then slows down a lot. I think it looks really clean. 
So I'm going to do that again in case you guys didn't quite catch it the first time. So I just come in here. I had to start an RSMB. And RSMB is always really nice <clears throat> because in the beginning of your clip, it can move a lot. And sometimes your clip can be uh, warpy in the beginning because of, like how fast the movement is. Like sometimes the clip would just be warpy. So if you add RSMB, it can usually hide a lot of those warps in the beginning. And also just warps in general can hide. So I add RSMB on here and I add Twixter and then I always have this unchecked because sometimes I use this method where you can divide the composition by how many frames it moves but that's a whole different Twixter method. I don't use that. I just check this box and then change it to frame number and then keyframe zero out of there and then go out, hold control and go to the right until it's a black screen and then just go one before it. Put this one it's 11. And for me, I'm just going to go 20 frames out because I'm not using a song right now. I get to just pick whatever. And use this graph again. Cut it at the end. And this is what it will look like. And you can see that is super clean. Like, there's literally no warps there that I see. And even like this chick's hand that's in the background, there's like no warps. Everything on this scene has like no warps, which is really nice. And that's another reason why I like this method is because it can usually lower the amount of warps you see because you're basically picking about two frames out of the entire clip that you actually want to see slowed down because like all the ones in the beginning is kind of just gone through really fast. You can see it goes from zero all, already to nine within the short amount of frames. And then this is when it goes through them really slow. So if you are smart about what clips you use, you can know that the beginning of the clip can maybe be borderline twixtable, but as long as the end is like twixtable to you, you'll be able to twist it really nice without any warps just like this. Because I'm sure in the beginning he's moving his foot a lot faster in the actual footage than it is when he has it out in the air. So I knew that I would be able to twist this because this was slow enough for me to get no warps on. So I'm just going to do this twister method for the rest. So I'll need again, twister. RSMB, I always check the box, frame number, and then just click on here, 16, and then you get 20 frames. Always click time remap if you want it to be longer. And then click again. Same thing with this one. I think you guys get the idea now. This is basically how you would do it for every clip or how I would do it. And you can always mess with the frame number that you want. It doesn't always have to be at zero and it doesn't always have to be at the last frame. You can kind of like mix it up however much you want. And also if you want it to be even slower than it already is, of course you can um, lessen the amount of frames or tighten the graph however you want. But make sure you keep it around this style because this is going to be the best graph for, uh, to use. I do not recommend using graphs like this for this method. If you're going to use this style of Twixter, you might as well just do it the original way. I have another tutorial on my video on how to do it that way, but this video is dedicated to the style where it goes super fast and then very slow at the end. All right, now for this clip, I'm going to want to have two movements in it. So what I'm going to do is keyframe the beginning like normal and scroll to the end until I'm at the black screen and then I go one before it. Now of course you can see there's a lot of frames here so 49 is the number. So for me, one, two, and then one, two. This is I have like this and then I'm going to go back to and put a keyframe in the middle. Now for me, I think that any of these parts are just going to look good but you're always going to want to put the keyframe at the spot where you want it to move because it's going to like jump basically to the next scene. So you got to put it at like a good spot that you'd want it to move at. So for me, I think this is a really good spot because what it's going to do is it's going to slow down. I want it to slow down maybe. Yeah, actually, maybe I'm going to have it slow down here instead. And then what you can do is line this up, delete this one, add this one here. And then he's going to close his head here. Or not close his head, close his ears, and then that's going to be the end of it. Now, this is the way that you can do it this way, where you just graph it, and then boom, you're done, right? 
but sometimes you're going to want to skip some frames in the middle that are going to be potentially warpy. So like you've seen before, I wanted this spot right here to be here, but sometimes you're going to want to maybe skip this part in the middle. Maybe it's really warpy. So what you can do, so say your clip needs to be on this marker. This is the beat that you need to um, move your twixter on. So you're going to have this keyframe here like you already did or wherever the keyframe is and drag it to this point. And then you're going to pick wherever you want it to stop here. So, so for me, it was here. And you're just going to drag this just like this. So this frame lines up with the beat and this one is one behind it. And then if you twixter it and add the graph and everything, it'll look like this. And you see that it jumps right past it. And it actually looks pretty nice. So this is pretty clean. So that's what you're going to want to do for that instance. But for me, of course, like I said, I don't need to do that jump. So I'm just going to leave it the way it is. Just like that. And you can see that motion blur really helps it here because you could see that all these spots could potentially be warpy but the motion blur is helping out and making sure that it's not warpy and it actually makes it look cleaner with the motion blur on it in my, in my opinion i think it makes it look a lot cleaner that way all right guys so um i'm just gonna play it through the whole way like this this is what it looks like just like that that looks super clean in my opinion and um, I'm actually going to do a tutorial on scales and positions on this exact scene, like the, literally the same clip, I'm going to record it right after this. So if you guys want to know how to do scales on clips that are like scales and position transitions that are similar to this or just want to know how to do it in general, make sure to stay tuned to my channel. It'll probably be posted the day after I post this. Um, so yeah, I think thank you guys for watching. Hope you enjoyed and learned know how to do this new twixter method it's going to be really good to utilize in scenes like this where you want it to be really slow and like more of a sad type style editing or if you want to do more of like an svd glitchy style edit where it slows down at the end too like it always looks good you know obviously you'll find a time to use this because that's why you're using watching this video so yeah thank you guys for watching uh like and subscribe and comment down below if you want to see any more tutorials on things that i've done before because I know a lot of people ask for other tutorials and I'm just super lazy and don't do them, but yeah, thank you guys for watching. Peace out.